thirdly, what we're doing, uh, just as a safe measure, we're building another two million gallon basin that we can pitch you. Make sure speaking of, we finally got EPP permitting uh, two weeks ago to begin that process. Uh, so hopefully we'll be done with that considerably through that process before the, before the rainy season gets here. So that's the difference with the water energy. Yes, John. Okay, I'm just going to batch up several so I don't take up a lot of time. The big one is, how do you get a copy of your SOP? And for that matter, why don't you publish it on your website? That's a big one. The second is, where in this SOP does it say, what was the procedure for checking to see if the employees had done their job correctly in checking at the pump station? From what you're saying, I, I haven't heard that there was one. Another question is, in that SOP, where does it say you're supposed to put signs out? Related to that, did you put a sign at Bay Tree Road Bridge, which is the first bridge below the leak site? No, I can tell you that now, Mr. Coleman, because EPD requires it to be accessibility, and that Bay Tree Bridge is not accessible to the public. Should a born tow uh, is highly accessible to the public behind the Salty Snapper, where there's not a bridge, but we know folks are back there on the four wheels and thing, and even a sign back there where, where the two rivers can join, and then at the ramp of 131. How about so that's, why, that's why we didn't go in Bay Tree. How about Bland Park, which is halfway in between Bay Tree and Gorn Tech? What well, I'm going to tell you tonight, we, we, can take this, we can take this up at a later date. I don't want to spend all the time with the signs because you've been through that before with EPD. We followed every protocol of EPD uh, uh, required us to do. Uh, but I'd be happy to take that up. We're always willing to, to look at other things we can do and expand where we put signs. But Did you put a still, sign? Still to ask your question. We follow the protocol we're supposed to follow. Okay, well, I, then how do we get a copy of that protocol? APD, you're very familiar with them. Go to George EPD. We have to go to EPD to get the protocol for, that the Valdosta City is using. When we, yes, because we have to answer. They're the regulatory agency for the state of Georgia. We have to answer to them. We, we, we have I think to the point is we're, we're citizens here and we want you to do more than just what the state tells you. And we want you to do things yes, for sir. us. You work for us, right? And I'm, and I'm, and we're, like you said, we're so not don't just go by what the state tells you. Do what you wanted, what we want you to do for as citizens of, of this community, okay? And he's a citizen of this community. He's saying we want the sign where we need to see them. Absolutely. We don't want them just where the regulation says they have to be. I have to disagree with that whatsoever. I followed up with Mr. Porter by saying we will certainly look at expanding that as we do. I mean, as with this bill, we followed the protocol. Mm -hmm. we need to well, that's what I'm saying. That's all you did. You did not do what we want, what we need. You I'm followed right. the protocol. I'm writing down additional signs. I have yeah, we see the right, right. Speaker. That's exactly what I just said to you, and you, you, you told me right back. Well, yeah. that's all I want to do is follow the protocol. I just do what the government tells me to do. Above. Tell you that we're going to add signs. I promise. <laughs> As a result of this meeting, will there be a list of actions and then the follow through on that at a later date? Yeah, because I get it. It'll take minutes right now. Okay. Our city clerk is taking minutes. Hey, you've heard some of them. That catch basin thrills me. And I that, like that's, ten, that's a 10 million gallon catch basin that is overkill. And it I'm is. thrilled about that. What doesn't thrill me is the whole, I'm still stuck on because that's what I do for a living. Documentation, because again, I I am concerned that at the end of the day, you can throw up my bill on the job off and throw some money at this, but if you don't have these folks trained, and if you don't have training and people and retraining yearly, and if you don't have the right stuff in your procedures, you're just going to have another problem again and again. And I like to take the time. To, to show you something it's kind of interesting. I lived, I moved here to Hamilton County four years ago. And I want to show you my legs. Once I started taking showers in the well system off the Wipanuchi River. That's my legs. I didn't have a spot on them until I moved to Hamilton County. And I, I live now closer. I live two blocks from the Wiffle Beach today. And before I moved to where I am today, I live four blocks. Now, my, and I know, I have, this is one neighbor that, Gene, he just finds bottled water. I have another neighbor, Ace Smith, who lives on 44th. 
He's on a fixed stay home, and he's going and getting distilled water. He takes showers in distilled water. He doesn't use his well water to take showers. Now that's just two that live a half a mile from me. How many more people do we have that are fixed incomes in that basin within two, three, four blocks of the Ripaduchi that, that are having this problem? Can we move forward? Any other questions? Ms. Barber, Mr. Yes. Uh, at our meeting today, unfortunately, it came to light and found out that uh, our Florida Health Department and DEP has been alternating daily water testing along the Wicca River. And um, as of the test that was pulled the 6th, 6th January, the 6th of January, at the uh, Valosta Highway, um, I don't know, Mass and Valosta Highway 31, 445, um, had an extremely high level of coliform. And, and then today's results came back. Uh, we just got those results from yesterday's testing at 150 at the Belleville Bridge. Apparently, the flow or some of the flow has reached dangerous levels there. Um, we have, like I said before, Madison County, Hamilton County, issued local for space for emergency. We're fixing to probably have a special call meeting to extend hours again. And uh, in the next few days. But we've had, this will be our third health advisory over this field that, that our Florida Department of Health and DEP has issued for Florida on the Rip Future River. I'm assuming that they will probably have a health advisory issue tonight. Yeah, the health, the, I, I was just texting the health department and they said there's going to be another advisory come out tonight because of what they found Monday and what and, and Tuesday. So this this is an unusual event because normally within a day or two it comes to us and, and uh, it's over with, but this isn't that way. It's coming in slow and, and you know, so for almost a month now uh, we're having to issue these advisories to stay out of the river. So on January the 6th, the DEP data was for E. coli, 7,776 parts per, per 100 milliliters, and it was at 4,500 for coliform. Safe levels in Florida, I don't know how to answer Georgia, I believe there's anything above 400 for coliform, is that right? 400. 800 for E. coli. And uh, today at 150, the results were 20, 2,700 at 150 today, <coughs> which is uh, about a third of the <coughs> 31 that we have on the 6th. So we, we're, we're concerned about with this, the way the water flow is in the river right now. It's very, as you know, the river's low, you have very little flow going on. Some of our concerns is a lot of this material may either be trapped in some of the, the low-lying areas or sloughs in the along the river banks. And as we have these rain events, I had I live two miles from the river, State River Six, Madison County. I had an inch of rain Friday night, and I'm thinking that the city of Al Austin had something similar to that. So it just seems to me what I'm seeing here, when we have a, a, a rain event right now of an inch or so, you, you start to see more of this release being done and you start seeing these higher levels. And my fear is that, and, and our DEP and Florida Park Health is committed, and they're going to be testing daily until they get, you know, they, they tested eight days with no levels of high bacteria, and then they, the second time they lifted the advisory on the second event. And now it appears we're basically going to another advisory. For those of you that live in Madison, Hamilton, Swanee, you know, prepare this going to be probably issued tonight. And I don't know how many days that advisory will be up until we get those same levels again. But then I'm not concerned is, I don't need to drag this out, is what's behind it. Uh, this, this may be a long-term 
vent for us. And, and we're having to tell our folks, don't drink it, don't get in it, don't you know, test your wells, and do all this stuff. And uh, I, I just, I'm trying to show you or we'll point out the, the impact that this has on everybody. And uh, we've got a lot of, we've been investing a lot. Of and I'll just put it out there and clap that we would hopefully, we would expect to see about Austin to assist us in recouping some of the costs we've had to incur to uh, monitor our, and help our citizens. So just put that as an ask, and uh, we'll go from there. About the personal costs, people who have to buy water because they can't drink water out of the river. The compensation for that at all? Anything in plan? I just want to ask one question. It's cool up with Norman Kennedy and Jericho and on the other side of the door from the floor. I heard all sorts of things today and last week, earlier today. Could you please explain who the contractor was, what exactly happened, how big the hole in the pipe or whatever, where apparently a lot of more sewage came out of wherever it came out of. Explain exactly who was there, what happened, and how that nobody knows it, because I hear this stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but nobody really, well, a lot of people don't really know what happened. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we engaged with, with a uh, technology contractor from, uh, uh, late last year, mid last year, to work on a credit system. The name of the company is EMC, and uh, They've done a great job of implementing the technology that we've asked them to deploy for us. And uh, I should want to ask you, uh, we're, the, in, uh, we're in uh, Alabama. We're supposed to do a lot of that. The, uh, and the reason no one knows the mammals, because it's in the woods, it's probably quarter mile, half mile. Half mile off. Uh, if you uh, if you're from Dot Austin, you probably know where the like, Depot and uh, Target is. So if you go behind those stores, it becomes wooded back in that area. So if you go back in there a few hundred feet, several hundred feet, that's where the manhole is. And the manhole, there's a manhole on one side of the creek, and then there's a manhole on the opposite side of the creek. So that manhole right there. Uh, before it goes across the creek is where the top came off the manhole. You know, the manhole lid, and that's where it came out. All the stuff just came out of one manhole. That's the one manhole. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, yeah, I, I just want to make a statement. I mean, I've been sitting here listening to this. I've been trying to do some reasons for you guys. I've been a part of it. Uh, and I don't mean to take that the whole time. <coughs> You know, you talk about communication, you're talking about, you know, getting the word out and things going on here. You're going to have to last week and uh, you can go for a time and get more. Uh, now, I know you guys, Mr. Mayor and Council, because you all take it on the chin, I feel like you do, but you're not taking it no harder than any of us are. You hear it from the bottom of our constituents. And you're talking about the manhole in the woods. The first email I got from Mr. Barber, it said just that. It was filled in the wood, heavily wooded area behind Target. In that email, there was not one mention of a sugar creek. Mm -hmm. Any more way, anything, as bad as it would be in the woods. And we get that email about 12 hours before we get to the place, So as social media started lighting up with all that, I'm defending the fact that, I mean, yes, it's a bad spill. But I don't think it's hit any of the waterways from what I've been told. That wasn't the case. Um, you know, like that word, I had crap on my face when the meeting came out in the pressure. So from what I'm hearing from you, you know, you guys or uh, people here in the audience tonight, they just want to count and go. You know, if you guys send me out to work on a landhold, <coughs> you send me out to work on a pole at the bottom of I think we had a supervisor there. Somebody needs to be there. Answer to these questions. And I'm not picking on you guys. I'm not here to show out or anything. I'm just speaking the truth. This is where we are. This is the reality of it. Uh, 
to uh, have they? Uh, have no. they ever? Have they ever? I've been here, I've been city manager two years. Um, since I've been here two years, now that we've not had We've been going on for a long time. Before 09 had been happening, so. We're out there in the similar. Uh, still, from the jump with uh, with uh, PPD. Uh, but um, as far as I can remember back, I don't think we've had a fine. They, you know, what they've done in lieu of fines is they added more projects to keep the problem from happening. They, they'll, they'll do that many times. <laughs> Rather than a dollar value, they'll add more projects to the consent order. How will the notification system change? Notifying, notifying us downstream. And the reason I ask, a year or two ago, my, oh yeah, we have one place in North Carolina, my last playing around the water, we kayak a lot, Scott, like you do, and enjoy the water, get the truck, I'll have a text from a local official, stay out of the river. The spill happened four or five days prior. We just found out that day. And I've been in the river playing in my lab and having a good time on the North Carolina River. How will the notification system change to guarantee that everyone, even those who don't have email and internet access along the river, know about your spills? Because that, to me, is criminal, criminal neglect because you're endangering their lives. I mean, because you're in that water, their animals are in that water, their farm animals are in that water, and no one knows. I, I don't think I have an answer to that. You add to anybody on that email list, you can get it by phone, you can get it by um, notification, you get more specific with it as well. Um, if it's anywhere near a waterway, obviously we don't want an egg on anybody's face. We had um, one person in the campground get a reverse 911 call, and we have quite a few people in the campground have no <coughs> internet. So we're trying to take care of ourselves, and we're trying not to be dependent upon any government organization, because we do, you know, with the exception of a few people, um, you know, a lot of the people in Hamilton County, it's a 4K. So the, the folks that can help, I think, are helping <coughs> to do the job of it. But there has to be several ways of getting their Mr. Mr. Parker, is anybody here from Madison County? Uh, do y'all live within how far of the river? Three miles. Did y'all get our code red announcements on your telephone? Yes. Right, so we have a code red system in Madison County and our emergency management can uh, pinpoint target areas in the county, put out a, a blast phone call, uh, automated message that, that gives those type of warnings. Well, I'm glad yeah. to see that in our county, that, I think that system worked pretty good. And uh, so I don't know if Hamilton or Swanee has code red or similar type of announcement notification system. You are relying a lot on the uh, systems to tell you communications. I'm assuming that their battery or generator backup in the in the event of a catastrophic electrical outage, they all are on battery or generator backup. That would be to purchase more and more generators for backup. My other question is, and I don't know if you can do it in this particular area, but all right, have y'all looked at uh, high injection uh, well well pumps? For overflow of the sewage. They do use them in Collier County, in South Florida. They pump 35,000 feet down in, into the aquifer, but scientists have said by the time it comes out in the ocean, it's purified. Yeah, now that's a uh, pretty uh, wild statement. To do it. Yeah, we only allow to be surface discharge. I know down out in Gainesville, Florida, they have a deep well injection. They actually, instead of surface water injection, they dug a well 3,500 feet, and they're pumping it in the ground 3,500 feet. Uh, you know, some pros, some cons, some folks are pro to that. Some folks don't think they uh, that should be happening either. So, you know, still some science needs to be done up in this area to make sure it's all right. soil condition. You know, so they use a bubble there. system in South Florida. Yep. They inject them into the uh, brackish water They're system. going into the lower, lower Florida. I don't know yeah, if you can do that more up. Yeah, I don't know. If you get higher in the trigger, it's hard to get a little bit lower. Well, whatever you can do to communicate with us, get us some information, and support us, uh, and me as a citizen, I greatly appreciate your help. I have a question about those three alerts in Florida. The first one was put out on the 10th when all anybody knew was there was spill. Okay, better safe than sorry. The second one was put out when, as I understand it correctly, Valdosta found an elevated bacterial level at US 84, which I believe <coughs> we heard earlier is right next to the state line. Uh, does anyone in Valdosta know how many river miles from 
Yeah. 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 To see how the sewage is moving down the river, Valdosta, for example, is Valdosta doing that? No. We have uh, an answer from Tom Murdy of Swanee River Water Management District. We have done that, yeah. as you know. <coughs> Did you do it at Knights Ferry and Nankin? We haven't done it consistently, but we have done it. You know, when I still, you know, when a, when a location popped up. It, either at 84 or at 31, and we looked upstream and downstream in conjunction with DOH and DEP on specific days. Yeah, on specific days. And we did a site. We moved rapid. OK, and with the nights here in Nagy, and with 84 and state line, but Valdosta has not. Valdosta right. basically flushed its sewage down no. the river. No, no sir. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. And Mike just looks like the gentleman here said when we got that hot spot at Mike's Creek, we went down there. And we took our crew down there. They took samples. They did the lab work. We took it to lab and Thomas will work with the other folks are gonna say, oh, they're just making the numbers up. The numbers that you were posted on your Facebook were much higher than the independent lab and our own folks said. So I really can't let you stand there and not say we haven't been out there and do it. And you ever returned that data in response to the open records request I fired a week ago? I will have to talk to the city clerk about that. You didn't file it with me, sir. I asked you in your office earlier. And I gave you all the data. You asked me for the data, everything.